In this presentation, we will take a look at creating the financial statements, the balance sheet in particular, looking at the short-term and long-term portion of the loan payable, note payable. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're gonna have our loan on this side, giving us the detail, our amortization table down here. We're gonna enter any adjustments into our adjusting entries. We'll post those to our worksheet and then we'll create from the worksheet our balance sheet. So in other words, the balance sheet here is being made up of these accounts. So here's our, our just a little trial balance just to show us something in balance and let us focus in on where we want to for focus, that being the short term and long term of the notes payable. So this is showing that the assets are these two, adding up to 1,254,84, that adds up here. The liabilities are just these two numbers adding up to 112,655. And that's gonna be total liabilities after we make this adjustment. Our problem of course is that this 92,655 has a short term and long term component to it. How should we deal with that? There's a couple different ways. We're gonna talk about another way to deal with that here. And then our equity is all of this. That's adding up to 1,041,421. Uh, that's this number. After we're done with this, total assets will equal total liabilities and equity. So again, our goal here is to look at the short-term and long-term portion of this note. And it's an installment note, so it's paid every month. So there's gonna be some of it that's short-term and some of it that's long-term. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, we, we could put the entire uh, short-term or just have one loan oftentimes. So if we have one loan that we're dealing with, then we may on our trial balance just track that one loan in one account. And that's the easiest way to do it because that will be easiest to match out to the amortization table. In other words, if I have this amortization table and there's been three payments that have happened, if we have properly allocated between interest and principal for those three payments, we should then be at a balance of 92,655. So that's this balance here. However, that 92,655 doesn't represent short-term and long-term portion, it's just the entire thing. So we could just use this amortization table to break out the short-term and long-term portion uh, and, then, and then adjust the financial statements and just fix the financials without messing with the trial balance. Or we'll do as we're, do, we're gonna do here, we could create two accounts on the trial balance and make an adjusting entry. So at the end of each month, we'll make an adjusting entry and just break out the short-term and long-term and what that'll do, that's useful if we have a system that just makes our financial statements. If we're using a computer system that's just gonna generate our financial statements and we don't wanna do it outside like in Excel or some other system, then we need to find some way to make the trial balance have the short term and long term so that like if we did it in QuickBooks or something, it would just spit out the right report. And the only way to do that is to fix the trial balance. So that would be a reason to have a short term and long term portion just on the trial balance, even though it's gonna change and we'll just adjust it each each time period. So to do that again, that we have to break up the short term and long term. Now here's our, here's where we're at now. 12 months later, uh, we're gonna see, well, how much we're gonna pay in 12 months. Again, the, the tendency is to say, well, the payments are here. I'm gonna make 12 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, 12 adds up to here. <laughs> you would think it'd be 38,160. But again, that that's how much we're gonna pay, but it includes interest, which we haven't incurred yet. So we can't include, we're not including the interest, even though we're probably gonna pay it anyways. It's not a liability yet. It's not part of this number because we haven't incurred that interest yet. We haven't used it. We can only pick up the principal portion, which is these amounts. So it's gonna be this plus this plus this, 12 of them, 12 payments, or the 3182. Uh, or in other words, this is where we're at now in terms of the balance that is owed after 12 payments, this is where we will be at. So if we subtract these two out, or if we sum these up, I'll sum up. 
the payments are going to be here. That adds up to 3182, which is also, of course, going to be if we subtract the 92655 minus 61573 is the is the 31,082. So in other words, this is the current portion. This is the long term portion. So now we're just going to do that, make that adjustment here so that we have it in our trial balance. And once it's in our trial balance, we can generate the financial statements automatically from the trial balance exactly without having to break it out kind of manually on the financial statements. So what we'll do is we'll say this, this number needs to go down. It's all in short term now. So I'm going to do the opposite thing to that. We'll, we'll uh, debit that, right click and copy, put that up top, right click and paste one, two, three. And that needs to go down by the difference here. We're currently here, it needs to go down by the difference. So we could say it's gotta be equal to where we're at now, minus uh, the current portion. And that'll bring it down by the 61,573, uh, or we're gonna take it down by the long, we could also just pick up this number, 61,573. And that'll bring it down to just the current portion. And then we're going to say negative of this number, and that'll be the, the long-term portion, which of course it's at zero. The long-term portion is here, so we need to make it that number. So we're going to copy the long-term, put that on the bottom in H4. Then we'll go home tab, alignment, increase in denting, and there we have it. So if we post this then, here's the short term, here's the short term. We're in N6, where we say equals point to that 61,573 and enter. There's the 31,82. Uh, and then we've got the long term in N7 equals 61,573, bringing that balance out. So the total then still adds up to the uh, 92,655, uh, which is this number, that's the total, but it's broken out between the short term and long term portions. Now there's pros and cons to this. Again, the, the, the good thing about this is that now these numbers can be used directly to create the financial statement. The bad thing is that this will probably, like if, it, this were, if there were a lot of other accounts, this would be in the current portion account and this would be in long term. They may not be right next to each other on the trial balance. So whenever we do this process, we have to, we have to add those two accounts up and then match it to, the, to this amortization. If we have a lot of loans, that could be a tedious process because we're going to have to somehow put them all together in a short term and long term grouping. And we'll take a look at an example of that. But the nice thing is now that we go to our, our financial statements, I can generate them directly from what, what's on the trial balance without having to combine anything. I don't have to combine any numbers here to make the financials. I can just say this is the current portion and it'll just do it automatically. I could set up the computer system to do it. And then this is the long term portion and then it just it, it'll be able to generate that automatically and now uh, we're back in balance with uh, the assets equaling the liabilities and equity so we're able to break those two out by taking them just from uh, the trial balance